Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf and to a half episode of New Kid in the Bag, which is my series where I take a look at a whole lineup of discs from a manufacturer that's either new to me or I feel is underrepresented or just someone who I don't think gets a lot of love, which is kind of the case with this company or it was maybe like six months ago, but it's not now because today we're going to be taking a look at Lone Star Discs' most recent five molds. If you've been around the channel for a while, then you know that Lone Star was the first company to ever send me out any discs. And I'm super grateful to them for that. And I've continued a little bit of a relationship with them as I have tried with all disc manufacturers. Um, whoever wants to answer my emails. And as they've grown their team, they've also grown their lineup. So instead of doing a full new kit in the bag, where we play 18 holes and try to get a UDISC top 10 score, we're just gonna be playing nine holes with these five molds, which are the Blue Bonnet 2301, gonna be our putter. I actually put with it in a Hooligan Discs video, which is gonna come out after this. The Copperhead 3402, Feels very interesting because there's a thumb track on it and it's a little bit shallow normally for my liking, which I've noticed on some Lone Star molds. Some of them are just like the harpoon, very shallow. This seems to be like a harpoon with a thumb track. It's a little bit more blunt and there's a micro bead at the bottom. So super interesting mold, the copperhead here. The Lone Wolf 55 negative three one, ideally super straight little flip up disc. Kind of interesting, another little micro bead. It's not quite as like round to flat as you'd expect an understable mid to be, but the parting line is very low. And then two new distance drivers, the Nimitz 115 negative one, three, as well as the bayonet, 13, five, negative two, two. Also, I kind of lied. We're not going to be playing nine holes. We're going to be playing 10 holes with just these five discs. At Tradewinds Park Disc Golf Course, which I believe is in Deerfield Beach, Florida. This is a longer course in general, but we're not going to be playing the longest layout. I want to play the most common one. We're going to play white to Prodigy, which seems to be kind of the main layout. It's 5,465 feet. To get onto the top 10 on U-Disc, Service is really, really bad at this park. Gotta make sure that there's more than 50 people. Okay, a uh, good amount of people in the past 30 days. To get into the top 10, you need to be 51. So four down. We're gonna say that in order to keep all these discs, we need to make sure that we are two down on this course, but I've never thrown any of these before, including the blue bonnet. I've only putt with it. So hopefully over these 10 holes, we can get a good idea as to how these discs fly, as well as how to score well with new plastic to us. Since this is a hybrid new kit in the bag, if we can't get two down, one of these discs is going to you guys. And if we can't beat par, two of these discs are. And since this isn't a full new kit in the bag, that's just gonna be a straight up giveaway over on Instagram. Instead of putting them into the bag that gets given away after there are five molds, you'll know more about that if you've seen other new kit in the bag videos, but let's go ahead and start on this hole. Pretty short, just kind of a 220 foot bomber straight up the gut there. I think we're gonna go Lone Wolf because it is a mid range. It feels shallow. I've noticed the, the depths on Lone Star discs are all very interesting. Plastics are really nice. This is alpha plastic, one of my favorites out of Lone Star. And I think this is gonna flip a little. So throw this hard on a little bit of hyzer, it should just ride pretty much straight to the basket and base it. Can probably give this a little bit of an ace run since there is a backstop to it, but first throw ever with the Lone Wolf. Oh, flips a daisy. That was very flippy. I just wanna have one video where I have like a good first throw, you know? It almost never happens. Probably Blue Bonnet or Copperhead. I'm gonna guess Blue Bonnet. I feel like it's kind of, could be a workhorse of a disc for me just because of how neutral it seems. Oh, ba yeah, short, very, very short. All right, honestly, not really that short at all. Solid putter. It's a little thick in my hands, but the profile is similar to my peers. This Victor One plastic is nice though. Feels real good. Seems like this is gonna throw very well, kinda hopefully P2-like, just super straight, maybe slight turn, but very straight. We can hope at least. All right, basket just dead ahead, 225 feet here. Walkway is inbounds, but it's out of bounds past the walkway. Okay. And the walkway seems like it's right behind it. So you kind of want to land it close. It says 240 on Udis. We do have a headwind. So I think we're going to try out the copperhead. Also just totally forgot on that last hole how insanely flippy negative three one discs are. I, for some reason, I treated it like it was just a slightly understable mid, but they added that to be flippier than the BB6, which is what would have worked. Maybe even a little too flippy for how I initially threw it. So, all right, let's hope it's not a little too shallow, but should be a pretty simple straight to hyzer copperhead throw. Go in. Oh! oh, I thought I did that. That was probably like three feet short or something, but okay, I'm wrong. That had to have been behind because I got to watch that footage back because that is, that had to be within six inches. I don't think it touched any chains, but I would not be surprised to watch that back and see that it did. Great putt. 
Good disc, the Copperhead here. Like, it seems kind of pig-like. It kind of died a little at the end, but it kind of held a little. No, not pig-like. It's got a four glide. Pig's got one glide. I don't know. I don't know what to compare this disc to, but I like the feel of it, and I like the thumb track a lot. Feels good on a forehand. All right, this hole's a little hard to shoot. Hole 11 here is 325 feet. At 325, we're probably gonna have to go like a pushing hyzer. On a normal day, I could reach there with the mid. On a today day, I cannot, because I'm working on my form and it's trash. But I think this is where the Nimitz will shine. I think this is Bravo, yeah. I'm not normally the biggest fan of Bravo because of how gummy it is, but it feels good. 11.5, negative one, three are discs that I like, but this is so domey. The wind is pushing that way too, so not as much hyzer as I'd want. And I think we should be able to get there pretty decently. Yep, that's the shot. Get a skip. That looks like it could be parked or it could have hit something. All right, let's go. Shout out to that biker who just stopped to let me throw. That was sick, but that thing flies really nice. Plastic that Lone Star has coming out of their factory, just, it feels so different in a lot of ways, but it feels so good. Jeez, hopefully they keep their checkbooks open for next year or maybe the year after, you know? I don't know. I don't want to go to one manufacturer, but if the pockets are big enough, looks like we got a little stopped up for me and Parky parked. Oh my gosh, I thought I missed the high. Wow, thank you for catching Blue Bonnet. Oh, thank you, disc. All right, so hole 12 here, our fourth hole is straight. You're probably not even gonna really be able to see the basket. I can barely see the basket. It's like camouflage, it's not the same Prodigy baskets, it's the Mach 10s. You're not gonna be able to see it. <laughs> 346 feet, it says here, which is a lot of feet for my little noodle arm right now. So I think it's time to bring out the bayonet, which is also in the Bravo, 173 grams. 13.5, negative two, three. This thing is a bomber. Listen to this thing. You can't even hear it that much, but it's so, it's just so flexy. It kind of feels closer to 12 speed. I was just reviewing the Nuke and this definitely, I don't think this feels as deep as the Nuke. No, not as deep as, ah! Closer than Arrive is, but I think the Nuke is a little bit bigger for sure. I think we're gonna have to throw this on some hyzer just on this right side of that tree, have it flip up and then glide on the hyzer back. Not an easy shot, just gotta miss those low branches. Keep it low and driven and hyzer flippy. All easy things with a disc I've never thrown before and have to guess on how it's gonna fly. Super simple. Oh, it's not as flippy as I would've thought negative two two would be. I really thought that would've flipped up to flat. Not what I expected. I mean, out of my hand, I honestly threw this exactly how I wanted it to be thrown. Kept the nose down so that it could flip up and it wasn't two nose up, but it kind of just was a little less stable. I, I kind of hope there's a flat shot that I can just throw it flat and see if it'll turn at that point. Cause for a negative two, two, I thought that it wouldn't have been way flippier. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, this one, we can try to throw it in maybe. Just get through those trees. Soft enough that if we do hit a tree, it's not gonna bounce super far back, but that's it. Oh, that'd be a putt. All right, we've been playing safe and all right. I mean, we're two, I mean, we're at a goal of two, but I, I wanna get four, you know, it'd be cool to get four and 10. Uh, three, 250 feet is what we're looking at here. The green guy right there. Really tight line. You just gotta go straight up this gap. I don't think I have the perfect disc for this because I'd rather have a, a neutral mid range. I'm gonna take two lines, my actual play and then the Simon line, which I'm gonna be very bad at. Hey, Simon to Lone Star, who freaking knows? I think Nimitz up this gap on a pushing hyzer since it seems pretty neutral, it should just push and then get there. And then I wanna see if I can throw the bayonet over everything. Nimitz, come on, Anthony, you can do this. Just easy gap hit. Oh, I thought I did it. Bayonet over everything, maybe? Oh, I'm so weak. <laughs> I'm so weak. That's so high. Okay, never mind. At least it pierced the ground like a bayonet. That's kind of cool. Freaking one last tree, man. Let's see how this blue bonnet any throwing game is. Oh, pretty solid. That was pretty solid any throwing game, honestly. Nice, easy blue bonnet. All right, 290 feet here for hole 14, straight up the gut here. We could go forehand, but I think the backhand play is just a little bit easier, a little flex. Walkway is safe, but the parking lot is OB. I think we're gonna try to go bayonet again. Just flex it up the middle here. No, that is way more stable than the numbers. Thank you, good kicks. Wow, that's terrible. That was so bad. I will admit, I have not thrown a lot of like 
negative number or neutral number 13 speeds. A lot of them have been overstable 13 speeds, but that seems to act just like those overstable ones, if not slightly more overstable than some of them. I'm grateful for that little kick because that was a really bad throw. I mean, I did also leave it a little more flat. I've been struggling with Anheuser's lately, but we should have a little pitch or putt in. I want to give that one more try though because I feel like I know the Nimitz. I don't think it's negative one three, maybe negative one two, but the bayonet is weirding me out. This is also the problem with going pro in disc golf while redesigning your form, which is why I'm not going to be playing any tournaments for probably another two or three months even though tournament season has relatively started in a lot of places, including Florida. I'm sure I could play some tournaments this month, but I'm just not confident in my game at all. Like, luckily I was texting with Ganon Burt a little bit. He was telling me that as he was developing his form, like his distance, he lost some distance too, because I was telling him that I was, he's like, yeah, man, I was ready to quit a little bit. And that's kind of the stage where I'm grateful I have you guys in this channel because I don't think I can get there because this is paying my bills. But, whew, the way that I, I know that my form is getting better, but the way that I'm playing now, while developing it is making me not want to play disc golf much. But then there are glimpses of, hey, this is actually working very well. I just need to get some more of those, which just means more work, which I like to work. So big putt here. Oh, oh, that's not frustrating. At least it's a par. And pars are good, pars are good, pars are good. Gotta keep telling myself that pars are good. Otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy. I think this is saying though, I might try this one for a big bomber shot, but Nimitz is probably the disc for me. I've also not really been the biggest fan of the Bravo plastic. I much prefer the Alpha because it's a little bit stiffer. I've heard that Bravo is more stable, which is weird to me because normally stiffer plastics I feel are more stable, but maybe that's why I like Alpha, but I just like the stiffness of the Alpha for sure. All right, hole 15 here, 300 feet to the pin right there. Just a big hyzer. A part of me kind of wants to take the lone wolf at it. Be a little crazy. Just a real big spiking hyzer, high and floaty in. It sounds kind of fun. And I think since I value my score, let's, why not? Let's do it. No, that's too crazy. I think it's gotta have to be Nimitz. Oh, and we have a little headwind. So it's a good idea that I didn't make that first shot, but nice, easy pushing hyzer under or into the basket. Or into the tree. No, get around the tree. Go in the basket, get down. Oh my gosh, I'm ace running everything today. Oh, that was so good. Come on. I'm gonna try this lone wolf. God, I want that ace. <laughs> That's so fun. It's gonna be so short. No, mate. Oh, I could have done it. That's inside the circle, baby. Now I wanna see if I can actually throw that blue bonnet pretty far, but that high ceiling is right there. Oh, that slipped out of my hands. Still there. This was a putt. Alrighty. Lone Wolf a little short. Still inside the circle though. That's wild. Blue bonnet. Pretty much parked, honestly, a little closer than the Nimitz. All right, now we gotta snag that because we actually got a putt. All right, wasn't quite an ace run, it was a little long, but gosh, did it not feel like an ace run from the tee. Come on, Anthony. Oh, Anthony. All right, looks like we're about to head into a relatively short par four. It says like 450, so that should be birdies all day long. Let's see if we can get these last three. I am a little disappointed that, I mean, I missed that putt. That was an easy putt, but I'm not like, it's not the end of the world for me, you know? We're just kind of living and chilling. And we got a two down. Let's try to make the best of these last couple. So it looks like here, par four, 450. Walkway is inbounds. There's OB to the left of the walkway though, and OB to the right. So we gotta keep it up this middle gap here. A big part of me wants to get really aggressive with it and go roller with the bayonet, which actually might be a really good option, but it's not quite as stiff as I would like. It might flex a little too much. I think it would be good though. I mean, it is just a placement shot. It's all the way up this hill here. I don't even know if I could get there with the roller. I think we just throw placement with the Nimitz. Probably forehand is best. Yeah, just forehand Nimitz up the, into the hill, and then I'm gonna try that roller with the bayonet. Miss it. Get over that. Yeah, great shot. Okay, Whew, really, really good. Uh, that's a solid forehand. Nice and easy up and down. Now we're gonna go for that roller. Put it on a decent bit of cut. Oh, what the heck? That is so stable. That was supposed to be a roller. That is so stable. What? That's a lie, that negative two, two. Just to prove it, I haven't thrown this disc yet. I have a Shrike. A champ strike, negative one, two, it's 13 speed. I wanna see if that's the same level of understability. 
No, oh my gosh. Okay, that bayonet, I'm glad I'm not going crazy because that's perfect. That's actually gonna, oh my gosh. Turn, oh my gosh, wow. Okay, I'm so glad I'm not insane because I, I mean, I'm sure we can see in the edit, but I thought I put down the bayonet and the strike on the exact same angle. And the bayonet just was like, I'm going forever. I'm gonna be like a negative one three. What the heck? All right, well this forehand is great for me. That is such a good forehand. I think I'm probably about 340. Yeah, it's saying about 340-ish, so. Just gonna go ahead, chip up the copper head real fast. Maybe chip in the copper head real fast. Get there. Oh, come on. Nice, easy. Birdieville, three down, let's go. Oh, check this man out. This man is about to ride right past you. He's coming on his bike. Look at what's on the front of his bike. It's gonna be like four frames because I'm shooting 24 FPS, but check this out. <laughs> so cool. He's got a freaking cock on the front of his bike. All right, three down, pretty solid. Almost dunked it for the two. Not quite almost, but it feels better to say almost. All right, hole number 17 right here, dead ahead of us, 310 feet. Looks, I feel like I could just run everything pretty much with the Nimitz. I feel very confident with an 11 speed because I've thrown Grace's so much. And this seems to fly very similar to Grace's. I might have to compare them. Uh, this with maybe also the Horizon DD1 uh, when I open my mystery box and do that video. Maybe as it gets closer to my in the bag series where I try to determine what's in my bag. But I kind of want to try the lone what, 55 negative 31 and see if I can just hyzer flip it. See how far we can push it. It's three and 10 feet, which is a little far, but we are three down. Seems like that might be the fun thing to do instead of the right thing to do. Oh, that slipped off the front of the tee pad. Get a roll. Oh, that's disgusting, man. It slipped right off the front of that tee pad. That sucks. I think I probably could have gotten closer. I mean, I definitely would have gotten closer. Probably a little copperhead throw in between the Y. That'd be a sweet way to cap off the video before the last hole. Around the Y, blue bonnet little throw in. Oh, hole 18, three down. Let's get to four, because that's what it would have taken to get into the top 10. I think we have what it takes to make it happen. That's the fun part about playing with not a full lineup of discs, is you kind of got to get a little bit creative with things. All right, so we're going to the green basket out there, which it looks like is 304 feet. Could be a forehand, could be a backhand. I think it's finally time for the lone wolf to actually get a shot. I think blue bonnet, we haven't really thrown off the tee much to see how it throws. So I think I'll give it one more throw. I was kind of surprised by that 280 foot hole that we kind of almost parked. That just rolled 30 feet away from me. Really got to work on my touch with these because I do not feel super confident with them. But if we ace, I'll feel a lot more confident about it. Oh my gosh, I almost, I parked the other basket. What is that, 230 feet? That is such a flippy disc. I feel like it's all, it's, it's interesting too because it's not as gladi as I would expect. I think I just, I just turned it over too much. I just need to put a little more hyzer, trust it a little bit more. I think blue bonnet honestly would have been a better shot because I, I tend to leave putters higher anyways. Oh no, that's so straight, wow. That's very true to 2301. Good disc, glad we threw it. I really should have just told you guys we were playing to whatever basket I was closest to. No, too high. I opened up my hand up instead of out. So, the recent five releases from Lone Star, I think, are all pretty solid in their own right. I think in terms of the ones that I like the best, I'm gonna have to probably first stay Nimitz, which I'm surprised about because honestly, I didn't anticipate liking this disc so much. I thought it would be, I, I just thought it would be like a worse version of a Grace. Uh, which is what I throw, or like a Wraith or something, but it turned out to be better than my expectations. Even though it's domey and flexy, I really liked throwing it and I threw it well. So I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, second, I think it would probably have to be a tie between the Copperhead and the Blue Bonnet. These are both super solid new molds. And then I think probably at the bottom would have to be a tie between these two. I just could never really get them right. This, these numbers are just way off and I'm just not great at throwing these type of mids, especially because it kind of tricks my mind because the way that it's shaped feels more like a traditional stable mid-range, not understable. And so I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna release it slight hyzer and that's gonna be good, but it wasn't. If you wanna check out my last Nuke It In The Bag video, go ahead and check it out right down here. The whole series is gonna be linked over there. My first Lone Star series, check it out right up here before these five molds, but these are pretty solid. Lone Star's doing some cool stuff. Subscribe, like, all those good things. Okay, love you, bye. Also three downs and no giveaways. Let's go, finally freaking want a Nuke It In The Bag even though it was only half a Nuke It In The Bag, awesome.